Good morning, everyone. This week we are going to talk about the last topic in mechanics of materials, which is somehow wrapping up everything that we have learned so far. We want to talk about combined loading. As the name stands for, we are not going to talk about any new types of loading, but we want to combine what we have already learned so far. Remember from the beginning of mechanics of materials, after talking about the concept of stress and strain, we talked about the stresses and deformations caused by axial force. Then we talked about torsion. Then we talked about bending stress coming from bending moment and shear force that came from shear forces. So axial force, torsion, bending moment, and shear force. We want to combine all of those together. And by combining, I simply mean add them together. This is what we have learned as the concept of superposition method. There is, however, sometimes some confusing cases, specifically when we want to talk about bending moments. And that's when we want to talk about three-dimensional problems. Um, we talked about the eccentric loading in Chapter 5. We talked about how to determine the bending moment using the right-hand rule. But here, we are going to deal with more complicated cases because we are going to talk about three-dimensional problems. And solving three-dimensional problems requires us to visualize that. We need to use, again, the right-hand rule in a three-dimensional cases. So let's look into this simple case. Assume that there is one element called ABC. And it's subjected to a force of P, which is eccentric. And I want to know how much are stresses at the middle of this element, say at section B. To be able to solve this problem, I need to move this force to this point, to the centroid of this section, right? To move this force, we need to move it along the axis of the force, like along this line that you see, and then moving that downward to this point. Then I want to use the right-hand rule to see what kind of forces and moments would develop in this section. All right, let's do this together. First of all, I'm going to cut this section passing through this point, point B. So this is the section of interest. And again, remember that we need to move this force to the centroid, to this point. To move that, we are going to move this force along its axis. That would be the first move. This move doesn't produce any moment because it is moved along its axis. Now the second move would be moving that downward. To move that downward, we need to determine what kind of moment is produced by that. Put the hand along the direction of the force. Face it downward. So palm should be downward because this is the direction that we want to move the force. Now look at the thumb. What is the direction of thumb? So this moment is going to be produced along the horizontal axis. So that would be the axis of interest. So the moment is going to be like this. What kind of stresses are produced if we look at stresses, looking at this side, this bending moment is going to produce tension on top and compression on the bottom. So this is the way that we can determine what kind of forces we have at that section and how to determine the direction of stresses and sign of stresses at that point. Um, now let me assume that I want to draw a stress element for a point at this corner on top. I can take this one out. Stresses on the bottom of the section are compressive, and stresses that are produced by bending on top are going to be tensile. These stresses that are shown here are produced by moment, but I also know that there was an axial force, like this one. And that axial force is going to produce uniform stress distribution everywhere on the section, like this. So on top of section, it's going to change the magnitude of stress, but not the direction. So if I want to draw a stress element for top point, it would be tensile in the horizontal direction. What type of stress do you have in the vertical direction on that element? There is nothing to produce a vertical stress, so a stress on the vertical direction is zero. And that's it, that's stress element for this point. How much would be the magnitude of stress at this point? That would be bending stress, which is mc over i. Again, these are things that we have learned previously. And what is stress produced by axial force? It's force over area. And that's it. Do we see any shear stress here? 
it depends on if we have any shear force or torsion. Do we have any torsion here? No. What about shear force? No. So there is no shear stress at this point. Okay. Now I want you to practice the same concept and draw stress element for another problem similar to this, but instead of having force of P in that direction, say there is a force in the vertical direction. Just tell me what kind of stresses are produced at the same section if we have the force in the vertical direction. Which one is the right answer among these four options? Let's see. I need to move this force to the same cut section. To do that, I'm going to show the cut section here again. So we are talking about the same cut section, and we need to move this force to the centroid again. The first move would be moving that to the left side, like this. Does it produce any moment? Yes, because we have the force moving perpendicular to its axis. What kind of moment do we see in this case? Use the right hand rule, fingers upward, because this is the direction of the force, palm toward the direction the force has moved. What is the direction of thumb? It's again horizontal. It means that the axis of interest is the same as the previous case, but the moment would be opposite to the moment that we got before. I will show you the moment a little bit later. Let's have the second move. The second move would be moving that downward, which is not producing any moment because it is moved along its axis, okay? So once this force arrives to this point, we see two forces. One is V. What kind of force is this? Axial force? It's shear force because it's, per it's parallel to the cut section. And we see this moment that we just talked about. So these are two forces that we see. And look at this section on top. What kind of stresses are produced on top? Compressive stress because of that bending moment. Do we see any shear stress on top? No. You remember that shear stress is maximum at the neutral axis. That's minimum or zero at the top and on the bottom. So there is no shear stress on top. So getting back to this, which one is the right answer? This is going to be the right answer. That's the compressive stress. OK, now let's answer this question. What if I want to draw a stress element for this point at the neutral axis? Which of these stress elements would represent stress distribution at the middle of the section? What is the magnitude of bending stress in this case? Bending stress is going to be compressive on top. And it's going to be tensile on the bottom, and it is zero at the centroid. So there is no normal stress. So this is stress distribution caused by the bending moment. And if I want to draw a stress distribution caused by shear force, which is upward, that stress distribution is going to be maximum at the neutral axis, and it's going to be zero on the top and on the bottom. So this is the right answer for the middle <coughs> section. We just see stress shear stress distribution i just wanted to lay a foundation for our discussion today because we are going to talk about more complicated cases but we need to first make sure that we understand the basic concepts by this example